Hey, welcome to the broadcast. My name is Jeremy Fine. I'm the pastor here at Accelerate Church, and this is my wife. Hi, I'm Erin, and we are so excited here at Accelerate Church that you have joined and tuned in today. And we invite you to come sometime. Just come visit us. We'd love to have you and see you. And I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit has a word just for you today. You may be going through all kinds of things in life, but if you will tune in to His voice and His word, He has your answer. That's right. If you can't join us in person at 10 a.m. on Sundays at 4400 South Crockett, then you ought to go to our website, AccelerateChurch.cc. We have all our sermons there, and you can watch our services live and be a part of what God is doing here at Accelerate Church. But right now, we're going to get into the word today. If you lie, if you fornicate, adulterate, if you grumble, if you gossip, you're not going to make life count. You're not. We saw that Sunday through the scriptures. One of the biggest stumbling blocks to truly making life count is natural based thinking and reasoning. See, if I had that, do you think I would have just spent the last 15 minutes talking to you that straight? Do you? If I had natural reasoning, let me think how I can market this. That's not marketable, but it's very pastoral like. Real recognizes real. Watch out for natural reasoning. Watch out for that. Why? It will try to beautify what the Bible condemns. Natural reasoning will try to beautify what the Bible has said no to. You see, I hope you listen to me clearly. Just because it looks good, that doesn't make it good. Just because the American culture or the church culture that we're in in America now says it's good, that doesn't mean it's good. In Genesis chapter 2, somebody say, thank God for the Word. Thank God for the Word. Look, let's look at this. Genesis 2. Yeah, I preach from Genesis to Revelation. I believe it all. Don't you believe the Bible? Why don't you say it? I believe the Bible. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. <laughs> Genesis 2 verse 16. The Lord commanded the man. Did you see the order of things right out the gate? Commanded the man. He said, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. What a blessing. But, verse 17, the tithe principle shows up. Of the tree of the knowledge of, what is it? Good and this tree you shall not eat. So what's the word on the matter here? You shall not eat. You see that? Human reasoning, natural sense-based reasoning, will say, well, it looks good, so it must be good. It passes the eye test. I heard that a lot this past weekend when it came to college football. That team passed the eye test. That team did not. Well, okay, that's fine for football, but did you know when... You go to heaven, it doesn't matter how you saw things. Well, Lord, I thought my life was righteous and good. Well, how does God see it? Because that's the perspective that really matters. Can I say it a little bluntly to you? Your perspective doesn't matter. Again, why would many people come to him and say, Lord, Lord, thinking they're going right into heaven? And he says, depart. You don't want to hear those words. And you need somebody loving enough to tell you about that before that day comes. I ask you this Sunday, I'll ask you again, but don't you kind of want to know what the judge of the universe is going to say before you stand before him? I know I do. Most of you don't, I guess. By raising of your hand, how many want to know what the judge is going to say beforehand? Yes. Okay. Well, good, you're in the right place tonight. We're looking at Genesis And it says, the word of God said to the man in commandment form, you shall not eat. In a perfect environment, there was a commandment. Why? Because we have our free wills. So what does he say? Of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. How many of you got that? You shall not eat. How many think that's easy to understand? You think God talked with such philosophy that, that the man was having trouble understanding what God said there? How many understand you shall not? Can I tell you something? My two-year-old understands that. You shall not throw yourself on the ground and throw a fit and pound the ground. You shall not do that. He looks at me. I said, okay. He goes to get on the ground. I say, okay, I'll be right back. 
have a little wooden, little wooden spoon. I walk back with that. And all I got to do is hold it, tap my hand, and get up. He understands clearly, thou shalt not do that. Two-year-old, two-year-old. Two-year-old's that smart. You shall not do that. You got that? Somebody said, well, that's not love. Oh, it sure is. There's a lot of people that never, ever, 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 ever had that confronted in their life. Now they're grown adults. And I never know when some of them are going to come to church here and leave and get mad. And they were never disciplined. And they're not about to let a father do that now. Don't, don't call me father. That's not what I'm saying. But as a pastor, I stand in that office that confronts some things. And I, I can't help that. That's part of the job. In the Amplified, it says, you are to tell people in what way their lives are wrong. The discovery that you may not have discovered yet is, once I get to know you well enough, if I see that, by God, I have to tell you, hey, you're going to change that. And I just did from right here some of the things that you need to change, and you may not do it. I sure hope I don't have to tell you that personally, or then I have to wave bye-bye because you leave. Because you just won't listen. And you say, well, yeah, you're my pastor. Yeah, but if your pastor can't correct things, is that you don't have a pastor. It's no different than you saying, Lord, Lord, and he's not really your Lord because you do whatever you want. See, the Lord set up pastors. He gave them as gifts to you to equip you for the work of the ministry. So what people have come to me say, God's called me to ministry. I say, well, have you talked to your pastor about it? Well, no. Well, that's a problem. Because you're going to go think you're going to do ministry without being equipped to do it. I can't help the way God set things up. I have a pastor. I've got a great relationship with him. I could go call him right now and he would take my phone call and talk to me. You see what I'm saying? So don't sit here and hate on me if you don't have that. I mean, it just is what it is. We're back here in the Garden of Eden. The devil's never changed his game plan, I will tell you this. God said here, what did he say? You shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. Genesis 2, 17. Notice, take note of this. This was the tree of what? Good and evil. Everybody say it with me. Good and evil. Also take note of what the word is on the matter. You shall not eat of it. Everybody got that? Can you check those boxes? You ready to move on? Okay. Well, just like in the Garden of Eden, you and I must choose. Will we live according to what the word says? Or will we live by our own standards? See, one chapter later, Genesis 3, God's now created woman. Because he says in the next verse, it's not good for man to be alone. But look at this in Genesis chapter 3. Go the next chapter over. It says, so when the woman saw that the tree, pause, pause, pause. What's the name of the tree? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay. And so now the woman saw the tree was what? Good. So far, that's right. Yeah, it's good. And what else? The knowledge of good and evil. Well, she just saw the good in it. And look what else she saw. She saw it was pleasant to the eyes and that the tree was desirable. I don't see anything evil in that, do you? Good, pleasant, desirable. Is there anything evil? I mean, all I see is good, pleasant, desirable to make one wise. One wise to what? Good and evil. evil. And what did, the, what did the word say on the matter? You shall not eat that one. But what did she do? Through natural reasoning, because look, it was good for what? Food. That's a taste. Natural reasoning is, that looks like that would taste delicious. And see, they also covered the second point. It was pleasant to the eyes. What's that? Your sight. The sense realm is just screaming. This is good. This is pleasant. And the tree is desirable for what? To make one wise. This was written before the scripture was written that there's wisdom that doesn't descend from above, but is from beneath. Oh, you don't want every kind of wisdom there is out there. Hey, Pastor Jeremy here from Accelerate Church. And his wife, Erin. And we want to invite you this Christmas season to Accelerate Church. If you're in need of peace, joy, love, hope, wisdom, these are all gifts Jesus gives. And come to church. It's found in his word. 
And that's right, every Sunday, 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We'd love to see you soon. And we want to wish you a, a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Did you know what happened in the Garden of Eden is exactly what happens to people today? They do what looks good. They don't care what the Bible calls evil, if it looks good to them, if it seems loving to accept this and tolerate that. But the Bible says that's evil. Well, that's not loving. Wait, wait. Who wrote the Bible? God. Who is love? So let me say, let me get this right. You're trying to imitate him and walk in love, and love wrote you a letter, and you say that ain't loving. Maybe you've been listening to a demon. I'm talking about making this life count. You're not going to make this life count if you get your counsel from demonic influence. If the Bible says it's evil, and you say, well, I think it's good, I think it's pleasant, I think it's desirable. Well, that's a good way to bring a curse on you and your family. And for Eve's sake, and Adam's, all of humans and this whole earth. Simply because she did what looked good. You ever thought about that? Mix that with the scripture that says this. Every man does what's right in his own eyes, but the end is destruction. Oh, wow. Let me tell you something that's more serious than anything in your life. We're all going to stand before the eternal judge and his judgments will last forever. You see, in eternity, it won't matter what your life looks like compared to someone else's. It's not going to matter what your driveway looks like next to the neighbors, what car's sitting there. That's not going to matter. It's not going to matter when you stand before the king how many pieces of gold you have, how much your 401k has. There's something that matters a little bit more than all this. Paul talked about it in 1 Corinthians 9. I think Paul, he could weigh in on this, filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues more than the whole Corinth church. And he wrote this in 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Do you not know? Pause. Every time I read that in the Bible, I know that the enemy's taking his cues from the Bible. He wants to keep people from knowing what's about to be written. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? but one receives the prize, run, translation, live your life in such a way that you may obtain eternal life. Huh, you sure that's what he's talking about? Yeah, verse 25. Everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Yeah, they stop drinking certain things, eating certain things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we... For an imperishable crown. What? The only place you can find a crown that will not perish is in eternity. Because everything on this earth is going to be burned up. Every crown, every accolade, every award you win is going to be burned up. But there is a crown that you can get in eternity. But there's a certain way you got to live to get there. You catching the drift here? Eternity is the only place you can find a crown that won't perish. So the next verse says, Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty. Woo! See, when you live this life and you're not making it count, that it basically looks like someone living uncertain. You ever seen someone uncertain? They don't really know what to do. They hesitate. If you do that on the basketball court, the opposition is going to make you look silly because you're uncertain. You don't know what, I'm spo- what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? If you don't know what to do, you go out there like a dingling like this. And they'll just run up and down the court, right? You're like, oh, you're supposed to play defense. Well, I don't know what that is. See, uh, if people did that on the court, we'd all be like, okay, just sit, go sit down. Right? But we're talking about something that's real life. We're talking about eternity. We're not supposed to be living this lifetime in an uncertain way. I have no idea. What in the world's going on? Good night. How are you going to fight? You got to get your fight in the right place. See, thus I fight. Not as one who just beats the air. Not just punching air here. Praise the Lord. By the way, I'm not just preaching to humans. Let that, let that sit on you for a minute. See, sometimes people are like, Pastor, you're just, whoo, man, you're dealing so tough with them. Sunday, liars. 
Who's the father of all lies? Who am I really dealing tough with? Ask yourself that sometime. Well, the people that like, no, the, the one that fathered that, that gave him the seed. If I, can, if I can let him know I'm coming for him, guess what he's going to do? He's going to try to stir up more lies. Will you be open to him? I don't know. I hope not. I hope you walk in the truth, walk in the light. I spelled it out pretty plain tonight, right? But if you just beat the air, you know what that looks like? I'm going to write me another post. And where's that going to? Really, social media is for a lot of airheads, just to be honest with you. Look what he says in verse 27. But I discipline my body. There's a word that a lot of Christians don't like. And we're supposed to be disciples of Jesus. And you can't be a disciple of Jesus without discipline from Jesus. So what does that mean? Jesus was the word made flesh. So the word's going to come and discipline you. If you come and have an ear to hear what the Holy Spirit's saying... You see, if your ears more keenly attuned to the YouTube preacher and not your pastor, you're in deep trouble. Because the YouTube pastor, he's not going to be able to discipline you. Look at what Paul said. I discipline my neighbor's body. Is that what he said? My best friend's body? I discipline. No. Who did he discipline? My body. We're not in competition with anybody. It's us we have to deal with. Our own selves. I bring it into subjection, lest when I preach to others, and I'll add to that, write 13 books in the New Testament, inspired by the Holy Spirit, I myself should become what? Disqualified. <laughs> Disqualified. Somebody says, see, that's why I don't like New King James. Well, if you're reading King James, it's a little more uh, harsh. I'll be a castaway. What does that mean? See, let, let me just say this. It means rejected is what it means. I'm telling you this because there's a whole group, and it's been this way in the church since the beginning of the church, of people that have taught a demon doctrine that once you were born again, that's it. Why on earth would the apostle of grace write this message? Why would he write this? I discipline my body, if you literally go into the Greek and say this, he's saying, I beat myself black and blue. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. To bring this body into subjection of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Lest when I preach to others, I myself should become disqualified. I'm telling you right now, the Lord has, has really blessed this generation you can simply go to YouTube and type in heaven or hell, and you're going to find a whole slew of people that have gone to heaven or hell. And they come back to tell about it, and most of them have seen preachers there. Why? Because it was already written right here. It's just most people were asleep on the job, asleep at the wheel of life. They weren't making it count. Now this sounds like to me Paul was pretty serious about making his life count. And it sounds like to me that even if you are used by God to do great things and shake nations, which he literally did, he had this about him. I could become disqualified if I don't have some discipline. Hey, Pastor Jeremy here from Accelerate Church. And his wife, Erin. And we want to invite you this Christmas season to Accelerate Church. If you're in need of peace, joy, love, hope, Wisdom, these are all gifts Jesus gives. And come to church, it's found in His Word. And that's right, every Sunday, 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We'd love to see you soon. And we want to wish you a, a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. I'm going to say it again, it doesn't matter if you're doing well compared to others around you. You don't know all the details of that anyway. You only know what people tell you. Well, I'm doing pretty good compared to them. <laughs> Based on what? So I'm just going to tell you this. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of warfare or things that we face. You couldn't pay me millions of dollars to trade with somebody else just because they had more people. Wouldn't you like to go past there? They have a lot more people. No. I'd rather be right here where I know the core majority of people and I know the battles you're in and I've prayed with you and been with you and stuff and I know where you're at and we have a team here that's amazing. I, you kidding me? There's nothing appealing at all about having to start that whole thing over. And even if you had more people, and I don't know them, oh, Lord, have mercy, because this ain't no joke. i got to stand before the Lord and give an account for your soul. 
And my judgment's strict, stricter than yours in the sense of you're sitting here listening to me talk. And so I better be pointing you to the Word and to the Lord Jesus Christ. And telling you, you got to build your life on this. You can't build your life on the truth listening to lies. Is that simple enough? Doesn't matter how well you're doing compared to others. That's another reason I can't stand social media. Because you'll go on vacation and you'll want to post it and you simply just want to show off to people or you want to see how many likes you get and you want to show people this is the image I have. You want people to see. and Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm just telling you, you think about this for a moment. Think about what you're doing for just a moment with your life. Life is a stewardship. And I'm telling you, it's, it's like a puff of smoke. It's here and it's gone. We better make this thing count. Listen to me carefully. It doesn't matter what you're like compared to others. What matters is, what am I like compared to the eternal standard? And that eternal standard is the Word of God. Why? Because in its DNA, the Word of God is eternal. In its substance, in its makeup, this Word is not just words on paper. This is alive. This is living. This is eternal. Are you following me? And Psalms 119 says this, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Forever is eternity. So the word's settled. It won't change. So when you hear a scripture, you need to know God won't be mocked. What a man sows that he'll reap. That applies to your money, but don't box God in. That applies in eternity. One man went to hell and he saw Hitler being put in a gas chamber over and over and over and over again. He saw Hitler being raped by demons. That's what he saw. He said, well, I just don't believe that. Okay, okay. I won't tell you I believe it because what a man sows is that he's going to reap. Another man saw a preacher, a tent revivalist preaching to what he thought was people, but it was demons that had these black books, and he would be preaching. They'd just start pounding him with that, beating him. Well, it should beat him to death, but, it, you know, it's his spirit. He can't die. So I said, oh, I don't believe that. Well, you know what? That man was greedy. That man was a shyster. That man got into womanizing, lying, things along that line. The word, the word settled where? Where's the word settled? I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just saying the word settled. You either say, I'm going to follow the word, or you haven't followed the word. But let me just say, God's not partial. It don't matter who you are or what you're doing. You better make sure that you are living biblically. Are you listening to me? Jesus said in Luke 21, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. They just keep going and going and going. So, when you approach things, therefore, through the lens of the Word of God, you're approaching those things from an eternal perspective. You got that? When you approach things through the lens of the Word of God, you're approaching things from an eternal perspective. And that's the only way you can truly love. That's the only way you can truly walk in grace. It's the only way you can walk in the mercy of God. Is to walk from the eternal perspective, such as this in the book of Proverbs, chapter 28. I don't have it on the screen, but it says, Those who forsake and confess their sins will find mercy. That's written for a reason, that's settled forever. Maybe it was dangerous you came and heard that, because if you hadn't confessed and forsaken your sin, I'm not sure you're going to walk in the mercy. I mean, you are that you're breathing, there's that sense of mercy, but. I want a greater sense of mercy. I want to be able to sing forever. Your mercy endures forever. You took a sinner that repented. You made me righteous by your blood. Woo! I rule and reign in life through the grace that Jesus has given me. And I listen to the teacher of, that grace is that tells me, no, 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 no. You see, I, I remember this was just a few years ago. I told a joke to just two other preachers. It was just the three of us. And I went to my hotel room that night, and my heart smote me. I've never told that joke again. I never will, because I'm sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I don't understand. I've heard other people tell it, even publicly. I don't see anything wrong with it, but I can tell you right now, I'm going to be sensitive to that and not let that come out of my mouth again. Oh, come on, tell us. No, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm not letting it come out. I'm going to be sensitive, see, when my heart smites me, instead of ignoring that. 
Wow. Do you want to make life count? I'm telling you this is how you make it count. The thought of eternity should produce hope in you. I've got to move kind of quick here, but Titus 3 says this in verse 7, that having been justified by His grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. According to is the set standard. So if you're an heir to a million dollars, how would you know that? Because someone told you in writing, I've got a million dollars that you're going to receive as an inheritance, right? It'd be according to what you saw written. And I'm talking to you about eternity right here. You're an heir according to the hope of eternal life. So that means eternity should be something you live with every day. You have this hope of eternal life. And the thing I'm going to inherit is something money can't buy. Immortality. Living forever with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. How do you pay for this? We couldn't pay, but Jesus paid. Jesus paid. Yeah. He paid the bell. Then what are you doing in jail? Prison doors open. What are you doing? Wow. Do you look at your life through the eyes of eternity or only the temporary? Ask yourself that question. Don't answer out loud. To make it count, to make your life count, you've got to have that hope of eternal life. Now, when it comes to eternity, instead of being afraid, and, and I had you raise your hand Sunday and tonight about this. How many want to know what the judge is going to say, right? Some people get nervous about this kind of talk. But you shouldn't get nervous about what the judge is going to say because you already know what the judge is going to say. You see, John chapter 12, verse 48. I hope you remember this verse and never forget it. I'll never forget 17 years old, I started studying my Bible. I mean, with passion. Started spending a lot of time studying my first day Bible I got just the, the year before at Christmas. I, I started studying that. I got it in Christmas in 1996. So this was 1997. I started studying the Word of God with a passion. And I came across this verse, and it marked me from that day to this, and it will throughout eternity, because I thought, wow, there it is. Here's the answer. He who rejects me, Jesus says, and does not receive my word, has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. There will not be something new on judgment day you have not heard. It's going to be the word of God that you've heard spoken in places like Accelerate Church. That's what's going to be there on judgment day is the word that has been spoken to you. Pastor Jeremy here. That's all the time we have today. So I hate to interrupt myself preaching there, but we had a good time today. Yes, we did. And we invite <laughs> you to come in person. Come see us. Stop by and say, hey, Pastor Jeremy. Hey, Miss Erin. I saw you on TV because we would love to meet you Absolutely. and shake your hand. Absolutely. And be sure and tune in again next time on the same station, same time for the Accelerate Church television broadcast.